Do you ever find yourself trying to sleep, but you can't seem to turn your mind off? In the last few videos, I've covered things like L-theanine, audiovisual entrainment, and cranial electrotherapy stimulation. Today, we're going to continue our focus on neurological strategies to reduce cognitive overactivation. Wouldn't it be great that instead of relying on external aids to reduce our cognitive overactivation, we could train our brains to reduce mental chatter? Well, today I'm going to focus on something called alpha neurofeedback that's going to do exactly this. I'm Dr. Chris Friesen from Friesen Performance, where I help you achieve your greatest potential by optimizing your psychology, physiology, and neurology. In future videos, I'm going to talk more about neurofeedback in terms of enhancing performance and reducing stress. Today, we're going to focus on neurofeedback, specifically with regard to helping us sleep. As I've noted in previous videos, neurofeedback is also known as EEG biofeedback. It's essentially a way to train our brains. It was Dr. Joe Camilla who was the first to show that humans could alter their brain waves when given feedback. His publications came out in the 1960s. He was the first to show that humans could increase alpha waves with feedback. Similar to what I've mentioned in previous videos, the harder we try to control anxiety, the worse it becomes. The same is true when it comes to producing alpha, which is a relaxing brainwave. And when alpha goes up, beta goes down. So when alpha goes up, our brains tend to relax. When beta goes down, we stop thinking. This is exactly what Dr. Camilla found. When participants in his lab tried really hard to increase alpha, it didn't work. It was only when they stopped trying and let go did the alpha go up. When we try too hard, our beta waves, our fast waves in our brains go up. The idea is you need to drop the struggle to allow the alpha waves to go up. The same is true with your sympathetic nervous system or your stress response. You have to stop trying to allow it to come down. It's helpful to understand something called the default mode network. The default mode network, or the DMN, was discovered by researchers when they were using fMRIs to study participants or subjects. What they found was particular areas of the brain would light up when participants were just waiting. The participants were reportedly doing nothing. The default mode network primarily involves the posterior cingulate and precuneus areas of the brain, in addition to the medial prefrontal cortex and areas of the parietal lobe called the angular gyrus. These areas, known as the default mode network, tend to light up when we're not doing a task. We may be daydreaming, mind-wandering, thinking about ourselves in the past or future. So what does this have to do with sleep? Well, often when we're trying to sleep, our default mode network gets overactivated, particularly with individuals who have problems with cognitive overactivation. In other words, a hard time shutting your mind down. Interestingly, researchers have found that the posterior singlet which is a central node of the default mode network, tends to calm down when people are meditating. In other words, when we increase alpha waves in the posterior cingulate, we tend to stop thinking. What's really neat is we know that we can increase our brain's ability to produce alpha waves with feedback. When it comes to research with neurofeedback in sleep, there's more research supporting SMR training in sleep as I covered in a previous video. But there is some preliminary evidence that alpha wave training does improve our sleep. But there's also a lot more research to show that alpha wave neurofeedback reduces stress, anxiety, and especially worry. But it's important that the training occurs at the back central part of the brain. In other words, the posterior cingulate. It's best to work with a licensed practitioner in neurofeedback to do this. There's very few consumer grade options out there. One exception is versus neurofeedback from Sense Labs, one of the many settings they have is an alpha training option that occurs at the back central part of the brain. You don't want to train up alpha waves on the front part of your brain, as this is associated often with problems with executive functioning. We don't want to turn our frontal lobes off or calm them down too much. I've done a lot of work with clients and patients who have trouble sleeping or suffer from anxiety or overthinking using alpha neurofeedback. I find that it's quite effective but it takes a lot of training to get the effect. Because I own all the equipment, I've trained myself on this as well. The experience to me was uncanny when I first did this. I set the system to increase the level of music or tone when I'm producing more alpha waves at the back central part of my brain. Remember, when there's more alpha waves back there, 
Basically, the default mode network starts to turn off. In other words, we stop thinking. Honestly, the first time I did this, it was such a strange experience. When the tone went up, my mind stopped thinking, which I don't think ever happened before. But of course, as soon as I realize that I'm not thinking, I'm thinking again, and the tone turns off or the music goes down. In the past, I've definitely had trouble sleeping because I couldn't turn my mind off. But after doing a lot of training and alpha neurofeedback, I found that I can easily allow my thoughts to drift away. So if the other strategies I've outlined in these videos don't help with your cognitive overactivation, consider finding a board certified neurofeedback practitioner to try alpha neurofeedback. If you like this video, please hit the like button, hit subscribe if you'd like to get alerted for future videos. So until next time, keep moving forward.